Um, hi, I'm Amanda. I am a senior artist. I work at DR Studios. I'm here to talk to you today about creating a portfolio and how to get into the jobs that you're looking to get into post-university. Um, so, this is the career maze. Uh, we all start at different points in the maze. Some of us have a better head start than others. Um, but for the, t the point of this, we're going to say we start right at the top here, the maze. Um, for most of you leaving uni, you will probably have the most direct route to your chosen profession because um, you would have been you would have been directed well by your uh, univers um, university lecturers and all the um, help that you get from studios coming in to conferences like you see today. Um, if you're anything like me, that's my pathway into games. Um, so back in the day, I uh, studied animation. This is before video game courses actually existed properly. There were a few out there, but they'd never been tried and tested. Um, so instead of spending thousands of pounds on a course that was never proven, I decided to go into a route which was animation. From animation, I, um, I went into films doing storyboarding and sculpting for stop motion films, concept art, illustrations, the whole uh, shebang there. And then I ended up redirecting because I actually wanted to work in games and decided to change my pathways, which led down a very long, complicated route outside of education, working full time while studying at the same time. And this was probably me the entire of my journey until I could finally get into games. Um, and there were, yeah, there were a lot of things in the way and I kept taking wrong turns and I kept missing opportunities or not doing things correctly because I didn't have the education in place to help me get the job as efficiently as possible. Um, yeah, when I finally got my job, my first full-time games art job uh, with a pension and all that good stuff with bonuses, uh, it, was a it was sweet relief. So hopefully I can help you do that as well today to get the most direct path there and try and avoid this where possible. Mm -hmm. It's okay to, change, to take an indirect route in as well. Lots of people do do it. Uh, people will come from different industries into games. It's just all about you if you want to be in it and how much you want to be in it and how you get there. It's your own personal journey. Um, so we'll talk about what a game artist is for people in the room that aren't, games art, uh, aren't game artists or studying game art. Uh, so the best way to really talk about it is a direct quote that I've taken from Wiki, which is, for video games, game artists are responsible for all aspects of the game and development that call for visual art. And those different roles, there's a lot of them. Um, these are just a few of them, to, to say the least. Um, and every single role, such as like a UI artist or an animator, will have specialist roles underneath that as well. So you could end up, as an animator, being a character animator or a VFX animator, etc., etc. Concept artist, you might go into environment, into characters, into hard surface. It's it depending on the studios you intend to apply to. Uh, you could be looking to funnel your expertise. <coughs> Today, I'm going to be talking broadly over these three roles because these are the three that I have the most experience with. Um, with my graphic design uh, background, being a 2D artist and studying 3D art to get into games because I had originally intended to do environment art um, and then ended up winding my way back into concept art. Uh, we're going to talk very briefly of uh, the T-shaped the employee. So in university, uh, at least your early years, I'm not sure exactly how the courses are run here, you get taught as a generalist um, and how to get a job within a generalised area. When you leave uni, you're expected to be an expert in one of these roles with a general knowledge of everything else. So an expert is basically just having a very in-depth 
knowledge of that one thing you're aiming to, uh, that one job that you're aiming to get when you leave university. Uh, <coughs> Valve also used this um, the T-shaped employee um, example. <coughs> Uh, this is a quote they've taken out of taken out the Valve's employee hand, um, manual, um, and they do. S and it is important to be an expert in something if you wish to be a T-shaped artist. Um, an expert who is too narrow has difficulty collaborating. A generalist that isn't that doesn't go deep enough into a single area ends up on the margins and isn't really contributing. Um, and that, I absolutely believe that. Uh, when you get hired for a job, you are expected to be an expert in that field you have applied for. And it's always a bonus to know a few other things on the side. So here's a few examples of what I've learnt over my years in games. Um, so concept art. You can, you can go in as a concept artist, um, but it, I would say it's highly, highly beneficial to know a bit of graphic design and a bit of 3D art. Um, I, there's plenty of uh, poor, uh, companies out there that when they hire for concept artists now, they will ask for the basic 3D modeling skills. I'm the same, if I hire in a concept artist, I want to see 3D modeling skills because it's integral to our workflows. UI art, it's always good to know how, to, um, how, well, how user experience works as well because you are designing the art for a user experience that needs to be fun, playable, and make sense in the world you're creating it into. Motion graphics for it is also a huge, huge plus. Like, any time, I recently hired a UI artist, and the fact that he had motion graphics skill in his portfolio was an instant, we're putting you in the yes pile so that we can interview you and see how you work. Um, and 3D art, so again, having the technical art knowledge and knowing about optimization, about shaders and how to control everything basically will be hugely beneficial to you when you leave. Um, <coughs> so things to consider when building your portfolio. Uh, I do a lot of portfolio reviews at events like EGX uh, and REST and I see a lot of common mistakes and things that people should be including in their portfolios but either forget or just don't think about it until someone actually mentions it to them. So we'll start with, um, yeah, we'll start with you thinking first, when you want to create a portfolio, what kind of artist are you? So if you are looking to be a 3D artist, what kind of 3D artist do you want to be? Do you want to specialise in character art? Do you want to specialise in weapons, hard surface, or environment art? Uh, and then you also need to consider the styles that you are comfortable and love working in. So if you are more of a stylized artist, maybe you want to look at places like Media Tonic or um, Blizzard, where those sort of styles are welcome. If you're looking, if you're more of a realistic artist, then um, of course, those, the studios like uh, Splash Damage, um, for example, that's what they look for in a portfolio. Um, and your experience, it's basically, it's, it's more of a cover of what is it that you know how to do best. And usually what you know how to do best is the sort of thing you practice in your spare time. Thus, you probably enjoy doing it quite a lot. Mm. Let's say there is a studio you definitely want to go work for. Um, so let's say you want to work for... Um, yeah, splash damage, for example. You need to find out what their processes are, what programs they use, and what kind of work they produce. If your portfolio is full of um, unicorns and fantasy artwork, mm. Mm. it's probably not going to fit in with their, um, the sort of games they create, um, which is very much more on the sci-fi and realistic gritty side. But yeah, I strongly recommend everyone go research artists that work in those studios that you wish to work in if those are the sort of studios you want to go work for. And, you, and um, you just need to think about the steps you need to take to get to those points. So yeah, we'll start with 3D art. I've now opened UI, it's fine. Um, 3D art, uh, make sure 
that you clearly present your work with good lighting. I cannot count the amount of times I see um, 3D mm. art. That is probably pretty good, for, um, but it's poorly lit, it's poorly presented. Because of that, those portfolios don't make it through to the interview stage. The presentation is almost as important as the work itself. So make sure you spend a little bit of time getting your presentation up to scratch and it, making it look good as a composition. Um, in regards to showing me the real stuff, I'm talking um, there for your studies. So most video games have a basis in realism. So it's good to see students that do studies of wood textures, metals, etc., and just post it on your portfolios because it's so applicable to everything we ever make in a studio. And again, with the applicable 3D art, if you want to be a character artist, put characters in your portfolio. If you want to be an environment artist, put environment stuff in your portfolio. There's been many times where I've looked at students' portfolios and they say, I want to be a character artist, but have absolutely no proof of organic modeling in any way, shape or form. Um, so for UI work, um, this stuff is usually presented on websites like Behance uh, instead of the usual art station. I imagine everyone's pretty familiar with art station. Um, and the work just needs to be clearly presented both as screenshots within the game so we can see how it works against game backdrops and also as isolated graphics so that we as employers can understand what it is that you created for the game. And if you do motion graphics, a showreel is hugely beneficial because it will show off your abilities to work in things like After Effects. And finally, concept art. I did another point of showing me the real stuff. It's all about studies and showing me all the real world things that we actually put into video games like chairs, lighting, human anatomy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I highly recommend keeping a sketchbook and a sketch blog that you update daily because I have looked at portfolios where I've aminard about their illustrations but based off a sketchbook I can see where, how they as an artist grow and develop and I'm more willing to take a risk on, on a student. Um, so yeah, another big one is show us concept art, not just illustration. <laughs> So you probably, concept art is a bit of a strange one. Uh, there is plenty of illustrative concept art, which is fine. But in a studio, uh, we need to have very quick iterations and turnarounds. And we like seeing the quick line arts, the thumbnails, the sketches, not just these masterful, beautiful paintings. I've had, I've had concept art portfolios come in, impeccable illustrations, absolutely wonderful, like Magic the Gathering style. Uh, Magic the Gathering style sort of level, but I won't hire them because they don't do concept art. There is no concept art in their portfolio, and I have and I have seen places where they hire illustrators that are not capable of producing concept art because they cannot work fast enough. Sorry, I have a little bit of a flu and a cold, so I'm a little bit uh, at the moment. <clears throat> so here's some examples of how we would like to see you like show your portfolios and all these artists have um, I've put in the bottom corner of the screen so you can go away and look at their work too because they're very good at showing off the stuff they make. So we have examples of maps they want us like of UV layouts um, and normals and specs and diffuse and all that good stuff because we can see where you we can see where you go wrong but if we can't see where you've gone wrong without peeling back the layers we don't know whether or not it's worth um, hiring you again. But it's also just a great way to see your work process, how you make it, and how capable you are. Um, same with environment art. There's usually less of a, the need for a UV map layout because it's such a, it's a huge piece of art. Um, this is from someone that, rec I say recently, uh, a little while ago won Ancient Civilizations Environment Art Contest. Um, and he has demonstrated his Unreal Engine fully lit scene alongside all the modular pieces he made and all his substance textures that he's created. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfectly valid way of showing your employers how to produce, how you produce work. Mm -hmm. uh, and modularity is a huge thing. Like 
that we use constantly in games because mm. obviously we want our games to run and not crash constantly. Um, UI again, um, showing us your in, your in screenshots and showing us your iterations as well as a big part of the process. And I use iteration as a constant term here. Um, we as artists mm. have to iterate constantly on the work um, based on game design changes, based on visual design on um, uh, visual game design changes, it, it happens, and this yeah, it's good to see what it is you do to get to the place to the end result. <laughs> this is a good example of a concept art scene. Um, this is how I prefer to see my portfolios typically when I look to hire someone. So typically we'll hire for, well, so you'll do a mood painting to get a feel of the area you're in. Um, and it will help define like lighting and it's snowy or the textures they use, it's mostly organic. Um, but for the rest of it, most of the time, we don't even do fully rendered illustrations like that. We do line art. That works best for 3D modelers because there is no way you can hide, um, you can hide the details behind photo bashing. And it's just easier between departments. Um, yeah, so your yeah, line art, basic colors, just to get that stuff down and providing prop sheets of modular pieces that can be used throughout a level. Mm. Characters, again, the same, just thumbnails, throwing down ideas. It doesn't matter if it's duplicated over and over again. It's all about getting those ideas as quickly as possible um, until you finally realize it to a final and fully turn, turn model. Some places like having orthographic, um, but there are also plenty of places that are happy with the typical front and back. So if you want to be a character concept artist, um, don't just do your fronts, do your backs as well. Don't worry too much about backgrounds or anything because it's all about the concept art mm. for that character. <coughs> so just an overview of this all. Only put the relevant best bits of work in to what it is that you want to be an expert, uh, you want a job in. Um, so if you're a 3D artist as well, and you do environment art, it's say about 70% environment art, uh, and the other 30 or 20, 10 here being um, foliage or um, hard surface props, etc. cetera. Um, it's about presentation. Everything needs to be clear, well lit, well presented. If it's a mess, and it usually doesn't get much of a look in because we are, um, we're very busy in studios, so we like to just see work there in our faces and easily accessible. Um, process, we like to see your process. Uh, it's, big th it's a big, big thing because it also helps us understand how you work and also make sure that like, you haven't just copy and pasted something off Google Images. That has happened, and I've seen it happen a few times, where you see big illustration pieces with no process, and it doesn't even belong to the artist in the first place. <coughs> On that note, authenticity. Um, you are often going to be working groups when you're at uni to produce uh, mini games or just uh, projects in general. When you showcase your work, be incredibly clear about what it is you produce and what it is you do within the game. Um, because if you get called in based off something that you didn't do, it's going to be a little bit embarrassing for both you and your employer, potential employer. Um, when they ask you about something, you go, no, sorry, I didn't make that. I actually did something else. And yeah. But what's next? So once you have your portfolios all done up, nice and pretty, you've talked to your peers, you've talked to your lecturers about um, about whether or not it's a decent, at a decent level you think is ready out for the big wide world out there. Um, I would definitely take them to places like um, game conferences and events like EGX and Res, where Yuki run a stand every year. Every, I, th I think it's every six months, is it? Yeah, EGX and s go to conferences. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, they're constantly going, take your portfolios down, mm and play some games and just get a portfolio review from the experts that are often there helping out the stands. Um, other conferences I highly recommend as well are bigger ones such as um, 
the Promised Land in Poland. Oh. It's a big art festival that focuses on VFX for film, VFX, concept art and 3D art for games and films. Um, there's also a similar event in the UK called Industry Workshops that does the same. And the best of the best all go there to do their lectures and give you expert tips on how they produce stuff. And you can also see how the industry is working at that time. Um, so I went this year and they did a lot of VR talks. So there's a huge, there's a huge amount of VR artwork, uh, concepting going on behind the scenes at the major studios, which is quite interesting. Um, of course, there's also, you have the access to internships where they will look at your portfolios to bring you in and, and you will get to learn and be a part of a studio environment and further expand your portfolio. Um, and quite frankly, you can also just e email people that you'd like to review your portfolio um, and just say, hi, can I borrow you for five minutes to look at my portfolio? I'd like some of your advice. Thank you. And sometimes they reply, sometimes they don't. Um, sorry, yeah, sometimes they reply, sometimes they don't. Um, don't feel too dis disheartened. Like I said, everyone's pretty busy in this industry. Um, but for the most part, a lot of people are happy to help out where they can because professionals have had loads of help from other professionals and we're all of this caring, sharing community. Um, so on top, uh, to encompass all of this, um, when you do go out there and talk to people, it's worth bearing in mind to be uh, very respectful and polite um, to everyone. It is a small industry. If you gain a, reputa a bad reputation, it can harm you in the long run rather than help you. Um, so yeah, I think my final point of this is don't be a dick. We will, everyone will know um, from one person or another. It's like Chinese whispers, um, but usually the information is more accurate. Uh, but yeah, be nice to each other, work together. There's no, there is no I in team. These games are produced by huge teams of people. Um, and as a final note, I do work in a mid-course studio, so most of this information is based off uh, a team that's about 30, rather than the usual um, AAA si uh, size studios of hundreds of <coughs> employees. When you go out and find jobs, um, I do recommend going to mid-core studios because it will give you uh, more experience around the different um, departments and games. Whereas when you go to AAA, you get isolated within a singular department and you won't actually learn much about games from everywhere else. So have a think about that when you do apply for studios out there. And that's basically it. <laughs> All right. Cheers.